to me, it was I felt really, it was a privilege, you know. Um, and we cast the goal with obviously it's an entirely LGBTQ cast, but we cast them because they were the funniest people we found. They're so funny, mm -hmm. and so I just was excited to get to work with all these comedians who hadn't really been given this big a stage before. Um, and it was great. It was great. It was to me this was a really it was a the experience of a lifetime in terms of being exposed to a whole other world, you know, for me. Um, but it also was we all speak the language of comedy, so there wasn't you know we all have the same references, we all have the same you know uh, the, the same goals and desires, which is to make people laugh. So that it was, but it was a great experience. I have a very like. Uh, I kind of roll my eyes at like the words cancel culture and woke culture. I think uh, it's a big pile of bullshit. <laughs> Personally, you know, I think people, if you just are a kind person and try to be nice and, you know, and your intentions are like good, then I think it's fine. And, and it was true with this movie. I never had, you know, it was the same experience I've had on every one of my movies. I've just directed everyone and pitched jokes and, the, you know, every once in a while I would turn to, you know, we had our onset writers, Guy Branham, who plays Henry in the film. Mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a gay, he's a comedian, super funny. I might turn to him and be like, is this appropriate or, you know. But having said that, it was, I don't know. We're, again, we're all comedians. Everyone involved in the movie, like you know, and that's and so it. You kind of, I don't know. We were all kind of spoke the same language in terms of that. I've made my career kind of building um, films around um, uh, talent, you mm -hmm. know. So whether it be Jason Siegel uh, with *Forgetting Sarah Marshall* or um, Russell Brand on *Games of the Greek*, or whatever. I, what I like to do is work closely with an actor um, and really draw out what makes them funny and create a movie around them. And that's what this was too. So it's hard for me to separate where what I bring to something. I mean, I would also say if you watch this movie and you watch it with my other movies, you'd be like, yeah, it's it's a Stoller movie, whatever that is. So, you know. <laughs> Background is that I worked with, I cast them in Neighbors 2, or Bad Neighbors 2, and then I cast them in um, Friends from College, which is a show I created with my wife. And, and it was, and he was turned out to be an excellent actor, which I didn't know. And then we screened the first episode of Friends from College in a movie theater. And every time he was on screen, it destroyed. And I was like, oh, he's like a, he's a proper movie star. Um, and so I approached him about writing this movie um, uh, and kind of building a comedy vehicle around him. I'll say that too, like we're very different in, in certain ways. Like I'm straight, I'm married, I have three kids, he's single, he's gay. But we also always agree on movies. We always agree on TV shows. We have the almost the exact same toast. We've seen the same taste, sorry. We have, we've seen the same obscure Andrew Lloyd Webber plays when we were kids. Like it's, we have, so we speak the same language in many ways too. Yeah. You know, it, I would say this is also a really romantic movie, so you don't, you know, it, it's just in terms of the tone of the movie. I didn't, never thought about it in terms of the subject matter, but in terms of tone and romance, you know, you only want to go so far, I guess. But I would say I went about as far as I went in, you know, any Sarah Marshall or Five Year Engagement, which are the other two romantic comedies I've done. Like, this is probably the same, maybe a little dirty. I mean, this has two, not just one orgy, but two orgies. It's always whatever the story demands. So you don't want to, you don't want to add something just to be shocking, or you don't want to, because that's, the audience knows. The audience is really smart, and if the, if the movie, if the comedy is dishonest in some way, if it's not telling an honest story, the audience doesn't laugh at it, you know? And so it's more about that, it's trying to tell the honest story. No, we, you know, from the beginning, we wanted to cast an entirely LGBTQ cast. Um, and that was also because of the conversations we're having in the movie. It would be strange if we had a straight actor playing gay. Um, there wasn't any, no, everyone we wanted to cast ended up doing it, you know, um, which was which was exciting. We did have, like, there's that fake movie within the movie, The Treasure Inside, that's, sp that's supposed to be an Oscar bait movie. We, we were planning on, shoot, we actually shot the reaction in movie theater. We were planning on actually shooting a clip from that with two straight actors, and we could find no one to do that. And that, I think, was because it's a lot of actors not being afraid to make fun of the Oscars, and maybe some actors wanting to, straight actors wanting to play gay at some point in the future and didn't want to make fun of it. But that was actually pretty weird. Uh, so that was the only thing that happened. But yeah. that has nothing to do with you know, playing gay in a movie. It's yeah. actually the opposite. It's like wanting to protect the ability to play gay. We're in a little bit of an odd moment right now. I mean, ultimately the movie is fantastic and everyone's gonna see it. And I think people might just see it on streaming, you know, and, and, and so that's, you know, that's my feeling about it. I would have preferred more people to have seen it in a theater just because the theatrical experience of this movie, I mean, did you see it last night? Yeah, yeah. It's I just so it. fun to watch this movie in a movie theater and I think, for whatever reason, people didn't, I have no idea, I don't know why, um, but I've made enough movies to know that this is a real, really, 
not just a good movie, but a super entertaining movie. And so you'll find it. It always finds. And I also say too that all the movies I've made, with the exception of Neighbors, which was Bad Neighbors here, which was a big hit out of the gate, all took a minute to find their audience. And then you know, like I think about like Sarah Marshall, and that's a movie where people are like, that movie's a classic. And I'm like, it did okay. It didn't do great when it came out. And people are like, really? And I'm like, yeah, no one remembers. So. No mm -hmm. one remembers box office, except for the director. Even your movie does really well, uh, the theatrical part of a movie's lifetime is about 1%. You know, the rest of the time it's at home, you know. I don't know. I mean, I think, Ghost. I think um, in terms of like what they, what happened with them next, I don't, I've, I, have, I actually don't really know. I, th I think they pulled it off. I think they stay together. They probably eventually have an open relationship. <laughs> yeah, I think not too long after the movie ends, they open up the relationship. Uh, yeah, that's what I think. I think the only other the only other problem is like Bobby definitely does not want to have kids. So if Aaron wants to have kids, that would be a, that would be the main problem in their relationship. <laughs> Bottom day. Bottom day. Yeah. Gay sex was more fun when straight people were uncomfortable with it. Somebody. Oh my god, do you guys remember straight people? Yeah, they had a nice run. Love.